My name is Alex, and I want to talk to you about talking to other people about Jesus without being weird. Some of the most awkward, uncomfortable conversations I've ever been in have been conversations where someone is trying to talk to someone else about Jesus, and it just feels awkward and strange. And the person they're talking to feels awkward and uncomfortable, and people walking by feel awkward and uncomfortable. And everybody's just like, get me out of this situation. Why am I doing this? Why do I have to be forced to be a part of this? This just feels weird. And I think that there's a way to talk to people about Jesus without being weird. In fact, I think most of the time people are offended by the gospel, not because it's the message of God, but because our methods are so awkward. And I think a lot of this comes out of the fact that most training we've been to, most equipping that the church has given us about talking about Jesus, sharing our faith, talking about the gospel, ha have been trainings that's been given by people who are extroverts. And many times we have this training by an extrovert and he's talking to an audience of introverts and he's making us feel guilty that we don't have the same personality type that he or she does. And many times they, they describe wanting to talk to everyone. Literally, if they weren't believers, they'd be talking to anyone ever, anyways. And they're just like, you need to be like me. You need to stop being an introvert. You need to start being an extrovert and then everything will be okay. And they look at our personality that God has given us and they see it as a sin problem with a lack of obedience to share our faith. And so introverts, if you're watching this, take a deep breath. It's okay. And I think there's another way even for you extroverts to share your faith where it doesn't have to be pushy, it doesn't have to be showy, and it doesn't have to make people feel uncomfortable. In fact, I think a lot of the times the way that we talk about or that we're trained to share the gospel are all about finding people who have volitional reasons for not being followers of Jesus. And what do I mean by that volitional? Volitional just means making a decision or a choice. These are people who are primed and ready. They're like, I'd become a follower of Jesus, but I don't know how. And in fact, you see this in most evangelism training. It talks all about what to say to people, not how to say it. And this training, I'm going to focus on how do we talk to people? How do we have conversations with people? How do we create curiosity with people so that we can naturally talk to them about Jesus instead of just looking for the people who just have volitional issues, who just say, I'd be a follower of Jesus, but I don't know how. And so that's why in most training, we have people saying, you need to ask Jesus in your heart which is never found in scripture, or you have in most trainings people saying, have people pray this prayer. And even though there's no prayer outlined in scripture for us to pray to become a follower of Jesus, or maybe they say, follow this formula, and they outline some clever formula, or they draw a diagram, and they're like, show this diagram to people, because in their mind, you just talk to as many people as you need to, till you find someone who has a volitional reason for not yet being a believer, then you lead them to the Lord. The only problem with that is most people don't have volitional reasons for rejecting Jesus. They have emotional or intellectual reasons. And most of our training about evangelism simply ignores those people and says, keep looking, talk to as many people as you can until you meet someone with a volitional issue. Most training is about what to say, not how to do it. And this is going to be about how to do it over the next uh, six videos, I'm going to talk about how do you build relationships with people? How do you build trust? How do you have a normal conversation with people? Because as American Christians, somehow we've lost the ability to have a normal conversation without shouting or getting in somebody's face or pushing them to something that they may not want to do or fully understand. Most of our, our evangelism training is really about how do we get a decision out of someone so that we can count it. But Jesus never asked us to gather decisions, collect decisions, to get people to pray a prayer. What Jesus asked is for us to make disciples. Making a disciple takes a lot longer than simply capturing a decision. See, a decision might be made in a moment, but a disciple is made over a lifetime. It's going to take a longer investment in people. It's going to be a slower process, but it's what Jesus asked for not what's most convenient for us. In fact, in Matthew 28, 19, Jesus said this as he's ascending into heaven. 
He says, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. And he says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. And teach them to obey everything I've commanded you. Remember, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. He didn't say, go and collect decisions. Go and get people to pray this prayer. He said, go and make disciples. And then he told us, here's what that looks like. It looks like people living and loving like I did. They're obeying my teachings. Now, we have this weird dichotomy in most American churches. We talk about evangelism happens before someone becomes a follower of Jesus, and discipleship happens after someone becomes a follower of Jesus. I would argue that's not a biblical idea at all. Evangelism is removing barriers between people and Jesus. Discipleship is teaching people to live and love like Jesus. And I think the whole process is discipleship. I think people need to be discipled before they're followers of Jesus, as they become new believers, and as they've been a follower of Jesus for a long time. We always need to continue to learn to live and love like Jesus. So if you notice there in that passage in Matthew chapter 28, Jesus said, go and make disciples, then baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Discipleship happens before, during, and after salvation. Discipleship is becoming a student of the way Jesus lived and loved. In the first century, there were rabbis who would teach their interpretation of the Old Testament, and they would say, this is how you apply this to everyday life. This is how you apply the Old Testament to everyday life. And Jesus said, hey, I'm your rabbi. I'm your master. Come and be a disciple of the way that I lived and loved. We can't do this without the Holy Spirit. And in fact, introducing people to the way that Jesus lived and loved will create in them a recognition that they can't live the way that he lived and love people the way that he loved without some supernatural empowerment. That brings them to a place where they recognize their need for Jesus to send his Holy Spirit inside of them and empower them to live and love like he did. When we learn to live and love like Jesus, we do that through the gospel. This is a word that comes up over and over again in the New Testament and we throw around in our churches and we talk about all the time when we talk about evangelism or talking about our faith. The gospel simply means good news. It's the story of Jesus. It's the story of God coming to earth to sacrifice himself in our place so that we might have a relationship with him. The gospel is not just for people who are far away from God who are not yet believers. And it's not just for new believers or for people who have been believers a long time. The gospel is for everyone. You don't ever graduate from the gospel. See, the gospel teaches us how to live and love like Jesus Christ. In any situation I find myself in my life, I can look at it through the filter of the gospel, the fact that Jesus, being innocent, laid down his life for me who was guilty so that I might freely receive salvation and a right standing with God, that allows me to look at any situation in my life and say, how can I model that in this situation? How can I model grace? How can I model sacrifice? How can I model living and loving like Jesus? And that applies whether I've been a believer 50 years 15 seconds, or I'm 50 years away from making a decision for Jesus Christ. The gospel applies to all of us. And that's why that classic phrase, preach the gospel to yourself daily, is so important. See, we become better students of the way Jesus lived and loved by becoming better understanders of the gospel. The good news. The good news is not about heaven and hell. The good news is about entering into a full, abundant life, the life of Jesus, living and loving like he did, in harmony with God, both now and forever. See, the gospel says God loved us so much that he died in our place so that we could have a right relationship with him, so that we could live his life now and forever, so that we could be with him and be like him. Heaven and hell come into it, but that's not the chief message. We're inviting people not to escape hell, we're inviting people to encounter Jesus and to live like him. We're not inviting people to heaven, we're not inviting people to church, we're not inviting people to a network or a denomination or a religion, we're inviting people into a life of Jesus 
we're inviting them to live and love like he did. We encounter the life of Jesus Christ when we repent and we believe. We see that repeated throughout the New Testament. Then he empowers us with the Holy Spirit. So we're empowered to live the life of Jesus through the Spirit. And then we invite people into the life of Jesus Christ through the gospel, the good news, this message of Jesus and what he did and the relationship he wants to have with us. And so you say, Alex, how do I bring this into my everyday life? All the time we hear about people with problems. In fact, at your workplace, people probably come up to you and they say, well, I have this problem in my marriage, I have this problem in my finances, I have this problem in the workplace, I have this problem with a friend, with a family member. Our lives are full of problems because our lives are full of sin. See, every problem is ultimately a sin problem. And the answer to every sin problem is the gospel. Wait for moments where people are complaining, where people are sharing, where people are broken, where there's sin, and then say, how does the gospel, how does the way that Jesus lived and loved enter into this so that I can live and love like that and talk about how he lived and how he would respond in this situation? See, every time there's a crack in the reality of your life, your world, your workplace, your family, your relationships, it's an opportunity for the gospel, the good news of Jesus, to shine through. Wait for a problem, wait for a complaint, wait for someone to share a fear, and then talk about Jesus, and talk about the way that he lived and loved, and he invited other people to come in and live and love the way that he did. Now, this is just the first video in a series of six videos I'm going to do. Next time, we're going to talk about how sharing the gospel without building trust ultimately puts more barriers between people and Jesus than if we had said nothing. Sometimes we think as long as we're saying the gospel, good things are going to happen. But I think a lot of times what we do is we actually put more barriers between people and Jesus than um, if we had just said nothing. In fact, if evangelism is removing barriers between people and Jesus, there's sometimes when our evangelistic efforts are actually anti-evangelism. And that's what we'll talk about next time. I hope that this has been helpful for you, and I hope this will free you a little bit to breathe a little bit easier, that this great responsibility and privilege that God has given us to talk to other people about his son doesn't have to be a burden. It can be a blessing.